Welcome to this Tutor to You revision video that looks at how we can manage extreme weather hazards in the UK. This is part of Paper 1, Unit A, The Challenge of Natural Hazards. There are a number of different ways extreme weather events in the UK are managed. Let's start off by looking at how the risk of flooding is managed. London is at risk of flooding from storm surges. The city suffered widespread damage when a storm surge swept in from the North Sea in 1953, killing more than 300 people along the East Coast. In 1982, the Thames Barrier, which is pictured on screen, was installed at a cost of £534 million. It was installed to prevent storm surges coming up the Thames. It is one of the largest movable flood barriers in the world. The Environment Agency has responsibility for flood management across the UK and it runs and maintains a Thames barrier, as well as London's other flood defences. The Thames barrier spans 520 metres across the River Thames near Woolwich. It protects 125 square kilometres of central London from flooding caused by tidal surges. It has 10 steel gates that can be raised into position across the River Thames. When raised, the main gates stand as high as a five-storey building and as wide as the opening of Tower Bridge. Each main gate weighs 3,300 tonnes. The Thames Barrier has been closed more than 200 times since it became operational in 1982. Of these closures, 114 were to protect against tidal flooding and 91 were to protect against combined tidal fluvial flooding. In addition to this, as part of its responsibility for flood management, the Environment Agency constantly monitors ground moisture. It looks at ground moisture levels in river basins in order to make accurate predictions of when flood events are likely to, to occur. It does this so it can give residents plenty of warning in the event of needing to evacuate. Finally, UK insurance companies and the government have an agreement in place that states people who buy new build properties on floodplains will face higher insurance premiums. The idea here is to stop construction companies building on sites where the flood risk is high. Let's think about how we can manage the risk of strong winds and storms. The UK Met Office has highly advanced technology which helps make accurate predictions about weather events. This means that it can predict severe storms several days in advance, meaning that people can be prepared. The Met Office will advise people against necessary, unnecessary travel as part of this. Advances in media technology also means that it's easier to issue severe weather warnings to a wider audience than in the past. In the past, this was via TV, radio and even loud hailers in cars. However, today, people can access the latest weather warnings online via computers, tablets and smartphones, even when they are not at home. Travel companies can use these weather warnings to cancel services in the event of extreme weather. This minimises the risk to customer safety, but it also gives people plenty of time to make alternative arrangements. For example, train companies will often cancel services if winds are dangerously high as they know that debris will fall onto the tracks, potentially blocking trains and stranding customers. The highway agency will also close major bridges such as the QE2 Dartford Crossing, which is pictured on the screen, as the risk of vehicles being blown over becomes high. The summer of 2022 was one of the hottest and driest on record in the UK, and saw water levels in rivers and reservoirs drop significantly. So how do we manage events like this? When areas have been experiencing prolonged drought conditions, individual water companies can announce hose pipe bans. This means that people cannot waste water on non-essential uses such as washing cars, watering the garden and filling up paddling pools. Consumers can be fined if they breach these hose pipe bans. In summer of 2022, several water companies announced hosepipe bans and they were still in place months later. In an extreme drought event, water companies can also apply to the government for an official drought order. 
This means that water supplies to houses are turned off and members of the public take their turns in queuing in the street at standpipes. Fortunately, this hasn't happened in the UK since 1976. Most houses across the UK now have water meters fitted. This means that households are charged for every single drop of water that they use. And this makes people think a little bit more about conserving water. Water companies are also investing more money in pipe networks, upgrading existing pipelines to stop water leakages. Additionally, in times of extreme heat, there may be travel restrictions as tarmac melts and railway lines buckle, and some events may be cancelled, such as sports fixtures. Finally, let's take a look at how the UK manages, manages plummeting temperatures. Local councils are responsible for safety along UK roads. Clearing snow and ice is a big part of this. During the winter months, gritters will be out all night ensuring that major roads are salted and therefore the risk of accidents caused by ice is minimised. And local councils will send out ploughs in the event of heavy snowfall to ensure that roads are not blocked for long. In the event of major snowfall, schools and businesses may close temporarily to ensure the safety of students, staff and customers. This is usually dictated by whether local transport services are running. So if you attend a rural school where the majority of students are bused in, you are much more likely to have a snow day. This is because the bus companies decide to cancel the route for that day. Public Health England and other national organisations will also send out cold weather warnings, reminding people to take extra care and minimise travel if needed. Linked to this is the work of various charities that support vulnerable people who will work hard to raise public awareness and support for the people most at risk during extreme cold. For example, isolated elderly people and the homeless. Churches are a really important part of this and will often open their doors to ensure that people have somewhere safe to sleep and have access to hot food and drinks. That concludes this Tutor to You revision video focusing on how we can manage extreme weather events in the UK. Thank you for watching.